just a tad. I hope I'm on the right uh, internet. <laughs> I forgot to look. <sighs> it's always something with me. Whoo. Normally it'll switch over when I go from my house to here on the right internet. I should have checked. Should have checked. Meg Mercer, it says, wants to join on video. Meg, I've not tried that before. I'm not sure if I were to click and bring you on. Um, well, actually, I, I did try that one time and it kicked me off. So we're going to hold off on that. Hi, Karen Baskins and Mabel Shaw, Kathy Patton from uh, Union, New Jersey. Hey, Kathy. I'm going to turn this around. Like I always do. It's a little um, less crowded in here since we had uh, transport leave today. Hi, Laurel. I know. Laurel's still looking for her forever home. She'll find her place. Let's see. Let's see who do we have on here. Laura Jones. Laura Lee Hard Hardcastle and Cynthia Harris and Sue Bowers. Hi, Pixie. Oh, that's not Pixie. That's Posey. Hi, Posey. Posey's still having some, some medical things going on. Yeah, she is. So we're watching her. She's doing good, though. Yes, yeah, she is. She's adorable. But Posey was not um, taken care of the first part of her life, and I mean severe neglect. Um, she came in with that dog, Rags, and both of them had flea and tick infestations like I have never seen in my life. So sometimes certain dogs' um, immune systems can't fight that off, and so she's having some residual issues from that that were working through look at her yeah she's frustrated too she says she wants to she wants to get better she's actually not acting sick that's one of the hard things sometimes about what we deal with here sometimes they're not acting sick but they are okay so let's see here we have a couple hundred people on i'm gonna just let a few more jump on here. Look at all the puppies that are left. We have one of the Jack Russells left, which is Pixie. <laughs> um, and we have uh, Ruby left, who's a chug. Ruby's being treated for a small little ringworm spot, which is not contagious anymore, but it's literally right in between her eyes. And then we have some of our scruffies left. There's six total and they're all black um, and they're adorable, but they're having the time of their life here. Look at them. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at these two. They're ready to come in. Yes, hi. Aw. Uh, this has been a puppy palooza here at the rescue. And we had some leave today, which has lightened the load here. Um, I'll tell you, uh, this time, like when I went down to the border, I overloaded the girls here. And um, we all know why I did it. You go down there, it's hard to turn anybody away. But I've promised y'all we were never going to sacrifice the quality of our care for quantity. And this time I went a little overboard. So all of us pitched in, put in extra hours, and I put in extra hours. Ashley, Yuli, and we have a new gal that started named Brenda. Um, so we, we did our best and we've done you know, a really good job uh, with the overload <laughs> that I caused. And I've promised them if I ever do that again, we're gonna make sure we have more fosters lined up, but we handled it okay. So you never wanna um, overload and sacrifice the quality of care that you give your dogs. Um, and we won't ever do that.
And when I did this time, that just means extra hours for me, more morning hours for me, evening hours, uh, same with the girls. So um, we feel a little bit lighter here tonight, thanks to Allison and Riley. If you didn't already watch the live feed, they uh, drove all the way to Overland Park, Kansas and delivered uh, 18 dogs to their new homes. Some of them were puppies, um, some were here at the rescue, some were in foster care. We had a Chagas positive dog, uh, Angel go home. Um, so it's always heartwarming when you get to see them being delivered because that's what we, we live for. <laughs> um, and we're very, very picky about the homes. So everybody, as I put on my post, is background checked. And we make sure that nobody has like domestic abuse or anything that we don't like in their background. Um, we just want to make sure our pups are going to the best of the best. So yes, we're picky. So if you get one of our puppies or our dogs, um, you become part of our family. So we background check you to make sure we'd have you over to our home for dinner. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna do a little bit of house uh, housekeeping and then we're gonna go around and see who's left. And um, yes, so I am going to be scheduling a transport out east for October and I am trying to book the Border Boys. If you remember last year, Big Rick and Special Ed went with me, um, and I'm trying to book them again, and I'm very flexible in October with my dates, so uh, Big Rick is looking at his work calendar to see when he can go. So if I'm able to get these gentlemen to come up, um, they'll be traveling with me. So it'll be Tracy and the Border Boys for October. Yes. And then you saw the Joes. Uh, the Joes, if you didn't look back in the post, they groomed my Huckleberry and he looks amazing. So anybody in the San Antonio area looking for a wonderful groomer, groomers, the Joes are wonderful. Um, and one thing I didn't know was Joe, the one with the real beautiful eyes, um, he gets all of the PetSmart and Petco rejects. So when they won't groom a dog because they're naughty, they send them to Joe. I didn't know that. So I really did not expect Huckleberry to allow them to clip around his face and I was expecting a sedation groom. <laughs> so when they told me that I was the problem, I was like, what, what? <laughs> I guess it is the same with your children. You know, they're always better for other people than they are for us. Well, Huckleberry is a turd with, you know, me sometimes and anybody who comes around me. But he did very, very well with Joe. So I was just, he's, we're gonna be going there regularly now. Now that I know that Joe can handle him and he truly looked at me and said, Tracy, we, we, we're we friends now. <laughs> About Huckleberry. So he really made that extra effort to make sure that my dog felt comfortable and, um, I could tell when I picked him up, he wasn't stressed out at all. He just he just looked like a different dog and he was happy to get back in my arms. So anyway, thank you, Joe and Joe. Um, I'll be back uh, in a couple of months when he gets all furry again. And then guys, believe it or not, we have, um, let's see, we have, is, is that correct? 39 days until our once a year fundraiser, the big give. I, it's hard to believe that it's here already. We do one fundraiser a year and that's the big give. And this year um, it is gonna be on September 22nd. And ironically, um, this is a little bit different. They normally started at midnight. It's starting, it looks like at 6 p.m. Uh, on the 22nd and then goes till 6 p.m. the next day on uh, the 23rd, right? Yeah. So I'll keep you posted on that. Rhonda and I are, are working on some things. Um, and then also tonight, Yuli is sick, so Ashley is filling in for her. We're like a big family here. Um, these girls have been working really, really hard with all these puppies, and Ash, uh, Ashley filled in tonight for Yuli. Um, 
because she went home sick. And I'm also going to mention, um, can you believe that coming up here shortly, Ashley will be with Tracy's Paws for three years. <laughs> um, I, I couldn't believe it. She told me that the other day and I, I had to go look at the calendar and she's right, three years. So she's been here through all of it. And actually, Ashley was hired by my ex-husband. Um, so she was here the night that the whole thing crashed. She was here uh, when he jumped the fence with the whoever he was with and took all my dogs. Um, so she's been with me through this whole nightmare and watched the blossoming of our new organization, Tracy's Paws. So anyway, so Ashley will be with us for three years. We're gonna do something special for her. She's pretty, pretty amazing. So hold on a minute. We're gonna go around and we're gonna go around and look at all of the dogs um, that didn't get to go, but we're gonna be doing local adoptions between now and uh, the October transport to the East Coast, which again, I'm still trying to you know, finalize the dates and hopefully the border boys are gonna be going with. Okay, so here we have our beautiful little cattle dogs. That's Rain and Boomer. And um, Boomer is heartworm positive. Let me show you guys something though that we do every month. Actually, every time we get new dogs. We do a lot of testing here, a lot of testing. And look at our list this time, guys. These are our Chagas positive dogs. And, um, you know, we also have dogs that have heartworm here. And we watch this very, very closely. And this time we had a 50% infection rate with the newest group that came in for Chagas. For those of you that don't know what Chagas is, please go to the Tracy's Paws Rescue website. There's a section on there. You can learn all about it. It's very treatable and uh, everybody's gonna be started um, on meds um, for that. So we'll make sure everybody's healthy. But that's what we're dealing with, guys. Um, you know, when you adopt out dogs in South Texas, we have a lot of things going on here. Um, not only do we have uh, fleas and ticks, we have Chagas bugs, heartworm, valley fever, all kinds of things. So you gotta be very careful um, with your dogs in our state and you make sure that they sleep inside at night. That's one big thing. And this is our sweet little Callista. Hi, Callista. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. She is gonna make somebody such a good pet. Oh, I know, honey, you're gonna get out in a minute. And I'll tell you one thing, guys. These dogs love sleeping inside at night with the air conditioning. They get used to that very, very quickly. So when we put them outside in this heat, they don't wanna stay out there very long. They love it in here. <laughs> so, and all those yummies that you bought from the Live Like a Dog site for them, we keep them busy chewing on the uh, the bully sticks and the choppers and all of that, that is so appreciated. Because with it being sweltering hot out, they're spending more time in their crates right now. Uh, it's just too hot out there. So, okay, so let's go in here. Okay, I am gonna show you guys. This is one of my favorite dogs on the planet. This is Whisper. Hi, Whisper. And Whisper is the dog that came in with all the babies. Um, she is heartworm positive and Chagas positive. And we call that the double whammy. Um, but we've treated so many dogs like Whisper and um, she has a bright future ahead of her. She's gonna do just great. And when I tell you she's got a perfect temperament, she, she really does. She's in the 40 pound range and um, she came in with five babies. And this, this dog was um, running the neighborhood with her babies and animal control was called. And she ran to a house and then they said they didn't want her anymore. 
But if you were with me uh, the night that she came in, look at her uh, fur growth on her uh, body. She's starting to just look like a healthy, beautiful, beautiful dog. Um, she's still just a little bit itchy, but nothing like she was when she came in. If you remember right, you could see her uh, skin all the way down um, when she came in. She just looked, she looks very, very, very sick and she's starting to just look very healthy and I love her. Now, you probably couldn't hear that snorting, but look who it is. <laughs> Y'all, I could just squeeze this one. Now, I want to make sure you, you look at his, do you remember the night that he came in, all those scars he had? Well, a lot of them are filling in. So I think that was a fairly new dog attack. Um, look at him. Oh, honey. I know. And he's a love bug. And he loves children, too, by the way. Oh, okay, hold on. I'm going to shut this. So this is Ike the Bulldog. And he is also Chagas positive and heartworm positive. But don't worry, he came to the right rescue. We're gonna make sure that he's taken care of. And I know who this is. This is Freckles. Hi, Freckles. I love her. She's a good girl. Aw. Isn't she pretty? Freckles really is a nice, nice dog. Just a nice girl. Enjoying the air condition in here. And just so you know what we do, we keep them draped with the, the uh, sheets, which everybody always asks me, why do you have the sheets on the crates? It's very comparable to you and I wearing a mask. So until we know these dogs are healthy, we don't want anybody coughing or barking that might have some sort of a you know, bacterial infection or, or a viral infection and spreading it all over. See, I hear somebody coughing in here. I don't know if it had something in their throat, but that stops that. It's a, it's a shield, it's a barrier. Same with our masks that we, we used to wear because of COVID. Okay. And, oh, there's our Mallory. Oop, sorry. There's Mallory. Our, hi, Mallory. She's a little shy, um, but she warms up very quickly when she gets to know you. And, oh, we have Martin in here. He's not sad anymore, guys. This is the little guy that was loaded with ticks when he came in. Um, that was, oh, I know, honey, he loves me. I love you too, Martin. Those were the eyes that I saw when I was down at the shelter. I could not leave this little boy behind. No, I couldn't. Look at that. That is a soulful, beautiful dog. I just love him. Okay, oh, and then those were the uh, two that are out right now. And over here, um, this is Mocha and Moki, but Moki's in the uh, isolation ward, um, and we'll go in there in a minute. Uh, she's, not, she's not feeling so great. And again, these are the uh, two cute, cute little cattle dogs, Rain and Boomer. Aw. Oh, and wait till I tell you guys this. You're going to love this. So we had 18 dogs leave, and Ashley uh, found one. <laughs> I'm going to let her tell you what she did. <laughs> oh, she calls me. What time was it that you called me? <laughs> I don't know, like 1. 1 o'clock. So she yeah. leaves here. And what would you find? Well, uh, free puppy. A free puppy? free puppy? Where at? At the Walmart parking lot. <laughs> How many have we gotten from this Walmart, Ashley? Yeah, I mean, it hasn't been too many. We've gotten, what, like four or five, maybe? Yeah. So were they just sitting outside with a sign? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is, like, I told her, I was like, hey, look, I'm, you know, I'm a vet tech at a rescue, and I'll text my boss and see what she says, but I, I don't know, and... Oh, come on, like, have I ever said no? Have I ever, have I ever, have I ever? You didn't, you didn't, you didn't answer your phone, so I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to take him. <laughs> have and I, they're like, really? And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to take him. Have I ever, ever, ever said no to any stray that you have called me about? Ever, ever one time? 
<laughs> so you're with the right people when they pick up strays on the side of the road or at Walmart, and that's what she did. This puppy, though, he fits good. I mean, we um, we adopted out um, who left today? It was um, uh, Echo. Yep, Echo and. Uh, Echo and River. Echo and River. So he's just taking one of their spots, and he's the same size. I think he's going to be a big dog. So is he outside now? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to yeah, show him. Still All right, I'm going to show him who she got at Walmart today. <laughs> I went dog shopping. <laughs> she went dog shopping. I, I mean, I'm not going to say no. I mean, people people who call me and say, you know, that if they know me and they say, "Will you take this dog?" I mean, what am I going to do? Say no? No. <laughs> Okay. Okay, this is the Left Behind crew. I know. Lourdes and Donovan and Buster and our sweet little April. Okay, there he is. That's the Walmart dog. She named him Charlie. guy out uh, last week and it is much cooler in that room we probably don't need the fan um, this group has been here for a while um, with the exception of the Walmart dog <laughs> uh, but it was very warm in there for a while and he did some adjustments and now it feels much better anyway and then here's all of our our little cute little puppies now let's go in the isolation ward Okay, we have our, our larger dogs in here. Uh, Moose and Senna are outside, but we have Naila, and it was so nice um, to watch Primrose go home today. That was the last of Naila's babies, and Naila uh, and her babies are from Roma, Texas, and uh, Naila is still looking for her home, and so is our sweet Laurel and we have our Elmer over here looking. I'm telling you, I don't know why any, nobody's picked this one. He jumps up and kisses me when he sees me. He's such a good little boy. Yes, I know. We've got our cute little border collies. And we have Kira over here. Hi, Kira. She's ready to go outside. Kenzie, Kira, I have the K group. I know, there's our beautiful girl. Okay, they'll be going out next, and here, we're gonna go in the um, isolation ward. Alrighty, so this is our Roma litter. Look at that, you guys took your, your blankets outside. So, this is our sweet little Roma litter. And over here, oh, listen to that noise. These are Whispers Babies. These are Whispers Babies. What are you doing? Hi. And they got their pictures taken today. So they're going to be looking for forever homes. And, um... We have this little Lauren in isolation right now. I'm watching her. Um, she had a couple of issues this morning, so I'm just keeping an eye on her. Uh, I know, sweetie. I'm not gonna let you. I'm not gonna let you kiss my hand. I'm gonna put some hand sanitizers in. So I'm watching her. I also want to say a thank you to. Oh gosh, hold on just a minute. Wait till I show you this. Hold on. I know they're so so beautiful. <laughs> okay. Look at these bulls we got. And the nicest note from Lisa Cannell. Um, she sent us a bunch of blankets and just a really really nice note. And look at her handwriting. I have to comment on that. I mean, look how perfect this lady writes. Just the sweetest note. Um, we really, really appreciate when people take time 
to do that. Um, thank you very much, Lisa. And then also Nancy Falls had sent some stuff for us. It's getting loud. <laughs> um, I'll take some questions if anybody has any, because I, I know some of you have, um, were making comments on the post about Scott Wyatt, my ex-husband. So if you want to ask me any questions about that, feel free. <clears throat> I will mention now that it's been so many, almost three years, I believe in my heart of hearts that he targeted me um, for obvious reasons. Um, just like he targeted the last girl, which was Ann Dreyer Jackson. She was very similar to me, had as a professional day job and a passion of saving. She loves to rescue dogs. So both of us he targeted. Um, and he also targeted the women that are still, I believe, with him today for obvious reasons. There's something going on here. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, you know, if you have any questions about that, I know many of you have been reaching out to them to try to inquire with your questions and whatnot and your mail's bouncing back. Keep your, your envelopes um, and make sure that you save those because I know several of you are working on some things and um, we're, we're, we stand with you. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's see here. Is there any questions that y'all have? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna look. Let's see. Margie Butcher Ryan says you're where you should be. Oh gosh, yes. You know, if I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but if you're in a situation in your life where you feel like everything is just crashing around you or you're not sure why things are not happening the way you want them to do or you're praying for things that are not coming uh, to fruition, there may be a reason why. Your life might not be falling apart. It might be falling into place and just trust, um, just trust. Trust it, right? Trust the universe that there's a better place for you, a better path. So I can't tell you how many times I cried and begged and tried to fix what was going on here uh, when I really didn't even know what was going on here. And now I'm so glad that those prayers went unanswered. Uh, we have such a wonderful team now and um, we have all of you and, um, you know, great staff and volunteers and it just you could just feel such a difference <laughs> so if you're struggling right now no matter what what it might be um, not not all the time when things come into your life to disrupt it is it you know for bad a lot of times it's to put you in a better place so you got to believe that and the, the best advice I can give is just keep going keep showing up Keep showing up. Don't ever stop showing up. Um, keep doing the work you love. You know, whether people notice you or they don't, you just keep plugging away. When you do things with a good heart, um, things just happen to, they always fall into place, you know? They do. I didn't believe that, though, three years ago. Three years ago, I really thought that my whole universe had caved in. And it didn't. Again, it wasn't falling apart, it was falling into place. And that means um, with all of you. So many of you have been with me for years and years. And I can't thank you enough, especially for you quiet little lions. <laughs> you know, one person, oh my gosh, she, she nailed it. She goes, we used to be cubs, but now we're a pride. <laughs> we're a lion pride now. Um, I feel like y'all are family to me. I really, really, really do. So. Thank you, um, and when I get this date announced in October for our East Coast trip, I hope we're gonna get the Border Boys, and if we do, we're just gonna have a blast like we did last year and uh, get a lot of dogs adopted. So I'm really, really pleased with the quality of the, of the adoptions that our adoption team um, does. Uh, again, I'll say it a hundred times, we believe in quality over quantity. So when the whole rescue community is having trouble uh, because there's a lot of dogs right now for adoption, 
we are maintaining our standards and we'll make sure that they're quality adoptions. We don't want our dogs to ever end up stray again. So that's one reason we do it. And the second reason we're such a, you know, such a sticklers about our adopters is, you know, they're part of our family, right? And we love each and every one of these dogs. Um, the staff here, we want to, they, they love them like I love them, or they wouldn't be here working with the dogs. That's one thing um, I can say. They love these dogs. And I know you love these dogs. You guys are, you, you meet them with me when we come in, um, when we bring them in from these shelters. Oh, and one last parting thing I'm going to mention. Um, I'm going to, I may have some new developments with the border shelter. And I'm not going to say it's good because it's not, but I'm working on some things behind the scenes because as you know, the standard of care in some of these facilities is so lacking that it, you walk in these places and your insides rattle. You see things that should not be happening. Things like just elementary shelter protocols, cleaning protocols, um, and the last time I was down there, I lost it a little bit. Uh, there's one thing you don't, well, there's a lot of things that you don't do in shelters, but one thing which everybody knows, um, when you work in a shelter, if you work in a reputable shelter where you've been trained properly, everybody knows that you don't clean kennels with the dogs in there. You don't take a hose and start spraying the dogs while they're still in there. And when I walked in to one of these facilities last time, that's exactly what they were doing. They took a hose and they were squirting the dogs and the water was ricocheting off of the concrete floor with urine and feces and going right up in the dog's face. When I tell you I saw red, I saw red and um, because this is not the first, second, third, fourth, fifth time I've seen it. It's every time I go down there. And I, I'm at a point now where it's, it's, it's always been unacceptable, but I'm in a, at a point right now where the hammer is going to start coming down. I'm not going to turn a blind eye to it anymore. The changes that I'm asking to be made are just simple, basic shelter protocols that if you're in a high traffic area with a lot of dogs that are there, they should be followed. Uh, just very elementary shelter protocols. So, and they're not being followed. Uh, I could go on and on and on. So things are heating up a little bit. I'm hoping I have something positive to tell you next week. And I hope that I will not have to get the public involved. I hope I will not have to get the media involved. I hope I will not have to go that route because guys, I don't like doing stuff like that. I just want the animals treated with respect. I want them, um, you know, just treated humanely. Humane care, that is not too much to ask. So, um, yeah, you know, you keep going, I keep going down to these places and praying for change and it gets worse and worse and worse. And at some point you say enough, enough, right? And that's where I'm at. So <clears throat> hopefully I don't have to call on the lion pack <laughs> to help me with this one, but I might, you know, I might, I might. So anyway, guys, I, I think I should have been looking for some questions here, but I think I'm going to go. Yeah, Anita says, good for you, tell them, hon. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just want people to do the right thing. How about you just treat the animals the way you would want to be treated if you were stuck in a place like that, just with love and care? You know, you don't have to go overboard, uh, but humane care. Clean, humane care. That's what I'm striving for. Yeah. Okay, guys, I think that's it. I love all of you. Spay and neuter your dogs, your cats, not one litter. Don't let them have a litter. And spay and neuter your weird friends, your relatives, and anybody else who needs it, okay? <laughs> I love all of you. Talk to you later. Bye.